Hey, I'm David Levin, and welcome to Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes showbiz stories you wouldn't have known from the stars themselves. Today, Anson talks about the creator of Happy Days, Gary Marshall, the producer, creator, mentor, and friend. We'll talk about Anson's co-stars, Ron Howard, Henry Winkler, Penny Marshall, and the legendary Happy Days softball team. We'll talk about how Gary Marshall changed Anson's life when Anson took Gary's advice and turned it into a post-Happy Days career. He talks about creating and directing the TV movie The Lone Star Kid and the impact of that movie in the real world. We'll also continue to talk about his post-Happy Days career, how he became a director of tons of TV shows, how he launched his own company, Star Maker Projects. Also, since Star Maker, Anson has done a ton of other projects, including a new product called Alert Drops. Here's Anson. Gary Marshall was a real mentor to the whole, to the whole cast. Gary, Gary Marshall was a big mentor to the whole cast, and that's why most people are still behind the camera and still very successful. Talk about, and I read this in his book, and I've read this in one or two other places, and just sort of pretending like I'm a blank slate, and I don't know this stuff, but I've read it, so I know it, but you know it because you were there. Talk about how Gary Marshall sort of created the whole set. This, and we're going to, with this method to my madness, we're leading to Star Maker. With right. This. But start out with you know, the mentoring process and how Gary Marshall created, you know, basically these seminars for everybody and sort of give me the laundry list of where, what, I mean, at, you know, Ron Howard, you, Penny Marshall, all these people who went on to other uh -huh. things. Sort of walk me through that whole story. Take starting from <clears throat> when we first started the series of Happy Days, I mean, Gary knew we were, we were outside of Ron. Ron was a professional and Ron has had years of experience. and incredible character and professionalism. He was more, more worried more about the rest of us who, you know, who were kind of like this. Wow, girls, showbiz, wow. He said, you know, he sat us down. And he, and he pretty, and he, I'll, he'll never forget, I'll never forget the first beginning talk. He said, listen, his first um, love years ago was t really teaching. He said, I was going to be a teacher before show business, but I ended up going to show business. So he says, I've always used my shows as classrooms, and Paramount here is the college. Now, let's get some things straight. He said, <clears throat> let's see what's important here. What's important here is a good show, because a good show is going to help everybody. And he said, so anything you want to get involved with creatively, I'll be there for you. You, know, you want to talk about writing, you want to talk about this, you want to talk about that. Anything that makes the show better, I'll be there for you. He says, I don't want to ever hear you don't like your dressing room. I don't want to ever hear you don't like the color of your phone. I don't want to ever hear you're not getting the right ride. to." Or he goes, I don't want to hear that stuff. It means nothing. It serves no purpose. It doesn't help you. It hurts you. Spend your time with what is going to benefit you. And that is bettering you and making a great show. He said, you want to direct? I'll open up every stage in, here, in, this, in, 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 in the studio and, you, in, and, and watch the best. You want to write, come up to the writing sessions and sit there you know, all night while we're tabling these scripts. More than welcome. Learn it. Wear more than one hat. He said, but don't give me immature problems or ego. I won't accept it. And that was it. And, that's, and basically, that was the start of it. So he was, he, it just went from there. He also believed in teamwork, and that's why he wanted to put together a baseball team. We put together this Happy Day softball team. We're all ex-athletes, and we played softball all over the world. Uh, all, it might, practically every major state in the United States, charity games. Armed forces all over the world for USO tours. Won most 95% of the time. And he felt if you played ball together, you're going to be together on the set. And he was right. We, we would take our, our downtime and go on a two-week baseball trip and have a blast. And it really made a spirit and a connection and friendships and, and respect um, um, kind of the foundation of our existence in that Marshall organization. And that pretty much is why today everybody is still doing well behind the camera because we, had, we, we were taught good ethics and responsibility and pr pr uh, pride in what we do and do the job. Jobs first. And also he said, he also said, and by the way, 
people, oh, I'm a co-star, oh, I'm a star. He said, there's opportunity everywhere you look. There is opportunity. Don't look for the bad, look for the good. There is good. He said, don't, he said, don't ever think you have nothing. You have everything. It's just how you frame your mind in, in search of it. Smart guy. Yep. Well, so what did you do with that advice? So um, he was very encouraging when I wanted to get behind the camera. I started by producing and creating shows. I created Skyward, starring Bette Davis. It was the first time uh, a um, disabled actress starred in a role in the history of television. Ron Howard directed it. Um, so, and then when I wanted to get into directing, um, I had some things in development as a producer. No one would really give you a break. You have to, and so what? So no one should give you a break. You make your own break. I was able to attach myself to a show um, I co-created called No Greater Gift. It was about organ donorship. It was an after-school special. We won the Humanities Prize and whatever. And I was able to exec produce and direct that. Then I directed The Lone Star Kid with James Earl Jones, which was very well received. It was about the youngest mayor in the history of the United States, 12 years old. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the reason I wanted, it was, wanted to do the movie, it was not so much because of the novelty of a 12-year-old kid. It was this kid's heart to lead was in the right place. People first. His community of Crab, Texas, he cared. And he saw a kid bleed to death because there was no local ambulance service. That's what motivated him to create a town, to create, the, to, to create a situation where that will never, ever happen again. He created a he, 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 he ran for mayor. He won against six other people. He created a temporary ambulance, temporary police, got roads in, Houston owed the community that hadn't been in there. It was unbelievable what this kid did. And I thought, I said, this is a microcosm for Washington. This is a microcosm for democracy. I wonder if anyone would ever get the bigger picture here. I didn't know. But we shot it. It did well. We got great reviews. Forgot about it. Years later, I get a letter from PBS. And Anson thought you'd like to know. We are so proud. Remember when Poland, they were becoming a democracy? Well, they had the Constitutional Committee at that time putting together the first constitution, they requested the Lone Star Kid to view in Poland, in front of that community, as the purest form of democracy and the way it should work. And my grandma, I tear thinking about this, my grandmother escaped before World War I, Poland. So I'm sitting there going, now that's the power of entertainment. Full circle. That's the power of entertainment. I thank Gary Marshall to give me just you know, the courage and, 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 and the um, tenacity to get something like that done. But, that, but to, to think that it transcended into this whole other, you know, situation, to actually have that a small effect on, an, on a new democracy. You know, my God, they got it. Someone got it. That's probably, that, that was one of the best things that ever happened in, that, to me in this business. That's it for now. In part four of our eight-part interview, Anson talks about celebrity set visits to Happy Days. You won't believe who dropped in. Visits by Beatles, Rolling Stones, Hollywood royalty, and Anson goes to the White House. Also, we'll talk about why Happy Days switched from one camera movie style to three cameras in front of a studio audience and how that impacted the show. Till then, let me know what you think so far and subscribe to Pop Goes the Culture and help us keep going by contributing just a little bit to our Patreon campaign. In the comments, let us know what your favorite Happy Days episode is. Thanks for watching. See you next time.